two, three, four. Sometimes we need to slow it down. Take a look around. These times go by so very fast Moments never last Just breathe Breathe in, breathe out Be quiet, be still, don't shout Love is what it's all about Just breathe Sometimes Just breathe Cause you'll regret When these days are past Your friend has seen you last Just breathe Breathe in, breathe out Quiet, be still, don't shout Well, good evening and welcome back to the Just Love Show. It has been a really glorious two weeks. 2014 uh, ended amazingly well. 2015 is off to a fantastic start. I hope everyone had a really wonderful holiday season and um, I hope that the year brings you all of your life dreams, all your blessings fulfilled. And uh, since I haven't done it for a couple weeks, maybe we'll just take that big deep breath and think about all the things we have grateful to be grateful for as we head into the new year. Um, one of the things I'm very grateful for, not just for my guests tonight, but upcoming this month, everybody's going to want to see. Oh, by the way, the show has now entered into the top four on WLOR.net. I want to thank everyone who's been tuning in and listening to me babble for the past few months. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying it because I'm certainly enjoying doing it. Um, one of the things that I'm extremely thankful for, aside from the wonderful guests I have returning tonight, uh, Mr. Alex Skolnick, who is going to be picking up where we left off in the wilds of Argentina and uh, the battle against Monsanto with the music that he is creating. Um, we're going to spend tonight revisiting our, uh, Planetary Coalition's entire album, song by song by song, so that we can hear exactly how Alex pulled this really tremendous project together, which um, has been named uh, by Guitar Player Magazine the top 50 guitar albums of 2014. Truly amazing accomplishment for a truly amazing human being. Um, but coming up this month, uh, next week I have Paul Bundance, who is uh, the creator of a new social media site called Ello. Um, and Ello doesn't keep any of your personal information, doesn't own any of your content. Paul also is the inventor of um, Kid Robot. Uh, he's also the inventor of Bundit's Bicycles, amongst many other things. So I'm really excited to talk to him. Uh, and anyone who, like me, is maybe a little burnt out on the barrage of advertisements and social media and stuff, this will be a show to listen to, uh, to see where social media is evolving to. Week after that, I have Charles Webb, who is the creator of Cinemorphix. Cinemorphix is... <clears throat> Uh, basically, the idea that we re can recast ourselves in life. If we're not happy with the role we're playing, look at your life as a film and recast yourself in it. I'm very excited to have Paul on the show. He's also a filmmaker, uh, brings a tremendous amount of wisdom, and I look forward to him sharing uh, this pretty interesting concept of cinemorphics. And then on the 28th, I have an amazing guest who has been in Tons of films you've heard of, probably like I Am, with, uh, which was Tom Shadyac's film, um, looking at the world, the challenges we face, and how we might want to address them in a different way. 
Dr. Radin is the researcher at Noetic Sciences. Noetic Sciences, if you don't know what that is, is an organization founded by Edgar Mitchell, the astronaut, who after getting back from space said, hey, you know, there's some stuff that we might, um, as scientists, as um, journeyers uh, through the universe and through life, that we might want to take a, a different approach at looking at. So Dr. Radin takes quantum physics and uses that uh, field of study and uh, looks at PSI phenomenon like um, telekinesis, telepathy, um, and on and on and on. Um, Dr. Radin is one of only 50 people in the world doing this work. He is a friend that I met about three years ago, and I'm truly excited to get to introduce uh, everyone to his amazing work and his amazing look at um, where the human species is evolving to. Um, he has a book called The Entangled Minds. I highly recommend going out and checking out. Um, before I get to Alex, um, as I've been doing, I'm going to do my little reading thing here. And I, I think this fits um, Alex pretty well. If one doesn't with soul level instinctual intention determine what in each experience they are meant to be in love and service to life, then in fear they will be drugged through that experience of life and what will seem like an endless series of meaningless doings, believing but not knowing, attempting, attempting vainly control but uh, attempting vainly control, never allowing surrender to acceptance. And then this is the quote I followed that up with: Belief uh, consists of accepting the affirmations of the soul. Unbelief is denying them. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Um, I think this fits Alex because if ever a person I've met in my life has really embraced what they are meant to be here doing. Uh, this man was put here to create great music, play great guitar, and it's truly an honor to have him back on the show and to call him friend. Welcome back, Alex. Uh, thanks, Kip. Wow, what a great uh, introduction. Uh, great welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you and, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy 2015. So we ran out of time uh, during the last show, and I, I really want people to hear this amazing album and know the stories behind the song. So... We left off in Argentina and our battle yeah. against Monsanto, and uh, you can pick up wherever you like from there. Yes, yeah, so I guess I got a little long-winded last time, but there <laughs> there are many great stories to tell. Absolutely. Okay, so um, the song that we left off on was called Salto, mm -hmm. and, um, and that was uh, with the, the guys in rural Argentina, um, and uh, they're, they've been engaged in a battle against Monsanto, and um, I explained that story before. So then uh, from there, the album moves to a song called Passage to Panayama, which is, features um, a great uh, vocalist, um, Kiran Alwalia. So this, is, this song captures the sounds of India, and uh, Kiran is... Um, I was actually raised in Toronto, but of uh, Indian heritage, and is a yeah, very, very um, recognized singer in, in the world of world music. She's won uh, a couple of Juno awards, which is like the Canadian Grammys. And um, her percussionist, uh, tab tabla player, um, is named Nitin Nitin, and he's um, considered the the new Zakir Hussain, you know, who is one of my all time heroes. And um, this tune just, um, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, it captures the, the flavor of India, <laughs> but um, it has um, some exciting energy, too. It's a little, there's, there's moments where um, it may be reminiscent of uh, Shakti, you know, with the great John McLaughlin, another hero of mine, and then other moments where it might even be reminiscent of Led Zeppelin a little bit. So I'm um, looking forward to sharing that with everyone. Well, before we move ahead, I was just looking at the site we're using uh, that we're going to be playing the songs off on. I'm, I'm at SoundCloud, and it looks like these are excerpts. Do we have a better link that we could go to? Oh, sure. Sure. Um, should I email that to you? That'd be perfect. Okay. Uh, one second. Um, now, are we going to understand the lyrics on this song, or or is it in Indian um, or Hindi or whatever dialect they're speaking? Yeah, it's just uh, so 
syllables for sulfide. So it's sort of like the, their equivalent of do re mi. Okay. So, right, so there's sent a link. So okay. I am looking for it right now. And uh, just so it's just syllables. There's no um, special. There, there's not a story to the words, or there isn't a story. No, it's it's almost like like an instrument. And originally, this was going to be an instrumental track with the violin as the main instrument. Uh, there's a great violinist on here. Her name's uh, Rachel Gallup. She's on a bunch of uh, the other tracks as well. Um, but I had. Uh, Gotten in, a, I'd gotten in a conversation with Karen and just let her know about the album and what I was. And just on a whim, I asked if you know we could maybe consider it. And I, you know, I was flattered she'd even consider it. But then uh, we agreed to at least get together and just see, you know, see here's the idea. I is this something you'd be interested in? Over, you know, uh, she's very enthusiastic about it, and she just really took it to this whole other level oh fantastic uh, uh sherry um i just sent you that link you should have that now okay hon, i'm going right now sherry for everyone out there is our wonderful engineer and network owner impresario of the airwaves <laughs> yeah, thank you sherry you're mm -hmm. very welcome okay i got it and i'm opening it and so we're going to track three Tracks. Yeah, they're all all the tracks are on the left hand corner, and this will be the third one. So it would be passage. Is that Through it? Prime yes. Okay, Correct. okay, I'm ready. Whenever you are. Let's do it. Okay. Passage to Pranayama.
Wow. That was phenomenal. Yeah. Amazing percussion work. You've always managed yeah, to find amazing. the best drummers. I mean, you had this at one time you had didn't you have a, like a 16-year-old kid playing drums with you in the Trio project? Um uh, not in the trio, but um, actually, yes, right, yeah. Right when I first started the trio, yeah, he was amazing. You were you were playing down on um, Clement Street, I think, with him a um, long, long time ago. Yes, yeah, that wasn't the guy I have now. Well, I think yeah, we just didn't even have an even better chemistry. But uh, I think yeah, right around that time, I started recognizing that. Uh, you know, the, the drums are, everything's built off the drums. That's your foundation. Right. So if you have a great drummer, then um, you're really, yeah, it's, it's hard to go wrong. <laughs> like, well, even and, if, you know, your guitar isn't that great. And I work, obviously, as you know, I work very hard on making the guitar as good as I can, but um, no matter what, if the drums are good, then it's okay. It's much better to have um, everything else be mediocre on top of great drums than mediocre drums. Because if the drums aren't good, then um, not, nothing's going to. Uh, then it's a lost cause, basically. But and, yeah, and, these, there's some really good guys. This guy is amazing. Uh, and, and, is the thing. and even thinking back to Skull Patrol, Naomi True um, was obviously a great friend, but also a tremendous percussionist. Mm hmm. And so, um, this is somebody, so Nitin, somebody I found, uh, well, he he works with Karen, and he's also worked with just some of the, the great Indian uh, artists, and uh, he's he's just a, a real master, so, and, I'm uh, not and he's so into doing the music. It's, everybody on the, on this has just been so enthusiastic, it's just been a real pleasure. It, it was, it was... Um a lot of times when I listen to percussion, I mean, uh, that sort of percussion, it sounds really good, but sometimes it doesn't always make sense. It doesn't, it, it's yeah. just sort of like soloing. That made musical sense to me. That's so great. That's, I'm glad to hear yeah. that. Um, I know what you mean, because I, I understand how music can go over somebody's head. I, I remember um, before I was a musician, um, not relating to some instrumental music um, because it it was really it really seemed to be um, played for other musicians mm -hmm. <laughs> and to me I I you know I don't want I want it to be appreciated by other musicians but I also um, yeah I, I want it to be listenable I want to communicate to others besides music. So well, I, I, I've always felt with, I've always felt with your playing that um, it wasn't just you know about how fast I can play noodling. It, it, you actually cared about the song as well, and I think sometimes um, people with your sort of ability on an instrument, it it becomes almost masturbatory. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. for you, it, it really your your playing has always made sense within the context of the song. You're you're. It's not like okay, here comes a solo, and it's com it ha doesn't seem like it's it has anything to do with the piece of music I was just listening to. Your solos have always worked uh, perfectly with the songs you're writing. Yeah, I think I got better at it too. Um, I think part of that was um, yeah being. Well, being in a in a heavy metal band for a few years, by the time I yeah, from the time I was sixteen, I developed this technique where I could really um, play the instrument well. But I always appreciated a great melody and and a great song. So even before I was doing it like I, I like now, I I just had to I I didn't know how to do it, but I understood what it was. And I understood what made great songs and great melodies. Um, I just didn't know how to do it. <laughs> so, right. Even though you know having this fluency on the instrument and this mu you know musical knowledge, it helped it, on the one hand. But um, there's just nothing like these years of experience and, and trial and error. The, so by the, the time I got to doing the Planetary Coalition album, you know, I was just 
very focused on not just having the songs be in an outlet for um, a bunch of great um, great players, but also yeah, very listenable and emotional at the same time. You know, I, I <clears throat> excuse me, I was, um, I was going to say, it's, well, you've obviously, you have way more than your 10,000 hours to make you a master at this point. Um, but I, I think it was Stephen Stills I heard interviewed one time. He said as long as he'd been playing guitar, he was always amazed that he was finding new things that he didn't know he could do with it before. Do you find the same? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there are times that, um, yeah, I just pick, pick up, you know, and I, especially when I get caught up in a lot of the, um, the day-to-day stuff and, you know, the, you know, planning and, you know, scheduling, you know, there's just, there's a lot to being a musician that doesn't involve playing music. I understand and that well. <laughs> you get, yeah, it's something you, you get so caught up in that stuff that, um, you know, you get a rare moment to just um, pick up the guitar casually, and then you say, oh, wow, oh, I forgot, I can do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, also, you know, I am playing all, all the time, but very often it's, you know, it's for a performance or a rehearsal or a, a recording, and uh, yeah, there are these moments where you just pick up the instrument. Oh wow, this is really cool. I for- I forgot. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny that leads into a, a sort of a theme thought that I've had today is that they've been more and more studies where they find that um, peak human performance really happens when you're in that zone, when you're acting from a purely instinctual subconscious level. Mm-hmm. And yep. and I think sometimes when we're not trying to do something, we sit down, we relax, all of a sudden we're like, oh, my God, I didn't know I could do that or I, I hadn't heard we hear something differently. And it sort of begs the question, it's like, if... That is true. If we are at our optimum performance level, when we're not using our conscious mind, when we're not thinking about thinking or having thinking about our, our awareness of ourself, then is this um, uh, evolution mm-hmm. of hum- the human brain that gave us this awareness, is it really something useful or is it sort of a genetic mutation that will lead to our untimely extinction because we're overthinking right, right. everything? Um, yeah, anyway, let's, I think you know, there's a lot to be said for that. Well, let's go on to the next song. Uh, tell us about Taxim Square. Okay, so Taxim Square uh, was inspired by um, a couple of visits I had to uh, Istanbul. And I've been there a few times. And um, the last time I was there, I remember going through the airport. And we were actually just, we were there... Uh, our show, I was there with uh, with with Testament, and our show had been canceled um, due to some shady promoter. And uh, imagine that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. It's what a shock in music. Um, but we had the plane ticket and we had the day off, so we just decided to go anyway and spend our day off in this humble. So. Um, we get there, and all, all the uh, the airline workers were on strike. So there's a big strike going on, and um, some some of the striking workers were fans of ours, and actually had had no idea about the show. That was one of the reasons the show didn't happen. There was like virtually no promotion, and these guys, were, you know, they couldn't believe it. They're like, you know, we love you guys. What are you guys doing in our, our airport? And we explained, and anyway, so. Um, I kind of bonded with a, a whole bunch of these workers, and I found it was against um, Turkish Airlines. They uh, explained what was going on. Anyway, a, a couple of these uh, protesters um, ended up, they said there, there is no way Tesla's coming to our, our country and not playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys made some calls. They set up a small venue. It ended up being like, you know, like us, you know, the one of our first gigs, yeah, like a, a it was a it was a bar gig basically, and it's not little, but it was packed, a line down the street, and uh, it was very well handled, much better than and these guys had never booked a show before, so afterwards we said, listen, you guys get out of this airline business and 
you guys need to become the concert promoters here. <laughs> anyway, so that was um, one of my earlier experiences with uh, Istanbul. And then um, there were the, the big protests on the news when the government, the Erdogan government, was attempting to um, take over Gezi Park and put in shopping malls. And it was a, uh, and they, they were, it was, the protests were growing and growing and uh, Western media was not covering it at all, and uh, I actually another surprise. Yes, exactly. So I I posted about it, and I kept hearing from people over there. They just they wanted me to help tell the story, so I kept sharing and you know kind of reposting. This was, a lot of this was on Twitter. Some of it was on Facebook, and um, they, there was just such appreciation from the uh, people in Istanbul. And the next day, I was actually on the cover of a news website as one of the few um, American quote-unquote celebrities that helped spread the word about these protests. And uh, there I was, uh, there along with Bruce Willis <laughs> and a couple other people. And uh, it was, yeah, it was surreal. Did, did Bruce um, break out his harmonica? <laughs> so yeah, it was a photograph of the, each of us, I, and I forget who the, the others were. But apparently, yeah, before this was common knowledge, nobody you know, was talking about this, and the news wasn't talking about it. So anyway, Gazy Park, where these protests occurred, is in an area called uh, Taksim Square, and um, Taksim actually happens to be the name of a uh, Middle Eastern rhythm. Mm -hmm. So it was a perfect title for the ten. Cool. And joining me is um, this great um, kanun player. So kanun is a traditional Turkish instrument that I've always had a great appreciation for. And I would hear this, or I'd, I'd see performers um, in the street, or you know, occasional clubs in you know, if I ever had a day off in Turkey. And it's this incredible instrument. I've always wanted to record with it. Um, so this. The guy's name is Tomer Pinnerbasi, and uh, he plays for a group called the New York Gypsy All-Stars. And um, the song is dedicated to the protests in Istanbul from a couple of years ago. Fantastic. Well, here we go with Taksim Square.
That was truly phenomenal, Alex. It made me um, think. I was I was just listening. Um, I've been listening to like 54 hours of. Might as well never uh, song. And what's this song? Playa La Roca. Let's just go. Let's just go right into it. Playa La Roca. Another phenomenal song. Um, what I was going to say at the end of the last song, I've been listening to about. Uh... Oh. Okay. Yeah. We will go right into the next song. <laughs> we don't have to. Right, it's up to you. No. Okay. I, 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 I don't understand why it keeps playing like that. Is it supposed to? Yeah, I think it just plays automatically. Okay. Unless will... you okay. press stop. Okay, I will try and catch it a lot quicker. I apologize. Okay. Oh, no problem. Uh, there, so there are more songs than there are. Is time left in the show so right we should probably selectively decide which which ones to play I'll, I'll try not to be so long-winded oh no 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 i was just going to say i've been listening to about uh 50 hours of alan watts interviews and he gets into talking about <clears throat> music in one of them and he 
uh, there's been some research done into music existing before language. Mm-hmm. And the song, uh, especially in uh, the the Taxim Square song, just made me think of that. And it was kind of funny. One of the things he said is that they think it really started from um, mating, basically. And I was kind of right. laughing when he said that because all these guys that I'd known when I was out playing, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, we got into it for the chicks and stuff. And I always said, oh, that's so shallow. And turns out they might have been right. But <laughs> Anyway, what oh, yeah. song? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, bi- it's biological. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And in the, the underlying rhythm in Taxim Square, that um, what was the instrument you said? Uh, the That's called Turkish... a tenun. I love that sound. Um, yeah, it's a great sound, and it, it's naturally played very fast. But that's just the normal pacing of it, um, you know. So, it to me, it, it, I always wanted to hear you know the dialogue between that and the guitar. Well, you you definitely made them speak. And then the one after that, uh, Playa La Ropa, that speech is my friends, uh, Rodrigo and Gabriela, who mm-hmm. just, you know, they've become this incredible uh, success story. I mean, just one, one of the biggest um, instrumental acts in the world. And and where uh, was where were they from? They are uh, originally from uh, Mexico City. Okay. And they moved to Ireland, and they actually had a, uh, they developed a huge following in the UK, uh, busking, and now they're you'll see them. Uh, you know, they they sell out Royal Albert Hall and they appear on Jimmy Kimmel. So they they become this sort of A-list level uh, act, but they're just you know very still very down to earth people and just it's like amazing. And- and in case anyone doesn't know what busking is, it's the guys you see playing on street corners at the subway, wherever. Uh, that's busking. Exactly. People out working really exactly. hard to make a couple of quarters. Exactly. And so they and don't have gi- to do anymore. And giving you amazing yeah. music a lot of time. So you've taken us, let's see, Argentina. Uh, we've yeah. gone to India. We've gone to Turkey. We've gone to Mexico. Uh, Where in the Mexico. world would Alex Skolnick like to take us next? Um, let's go somewhere completely different. Let's go to um, Africa, Mali. And we'll, uh, Allah Laki. And that one is um, track. It's after Old it? World track Dance. Eight. After Old World Dance, yeah. Got it. Um, I love Old World Dance. It's a, it's a little long, so since we're short on time, Allah the Key is just a couple minutes. Okay. And it's myself and a great um, musician, Yakuba Sissoko. He uh, plays the Kora, which almost looks like a guitar made out of a tree. <laughs> you can picture that. It's like we made from gourd. And uh, it's a real you know, part of the um, idea behind the project was to um, you know, combine uh, musical influences and nature and you know, draw attention to the planet in terms of you know, climate change and other issues. And I, I think there, you know, this instrument itself is just the perfect representation of music and nature. Now, did, now, now, a lot of these songs seem to have, um, you know, whether it's Monsanto or what was going on with the uh, strikes in tex- in Turkey. Um, was right. that intentional that they would have sort of a meaning beyond the music when you were putting this together? Uh, I didn't look for them. They kind of came to me. Yeah, you know, not every song has that, but in certain cases, um, I there in certain cases there were these stories to be told. So I thought, um, let's let's do the songs in such a way that uh, we can help tell the stories. Cool. Well, let's, so let's the hear... The song uh, Alu Laki is actually a traditional Malian tune from the uh, 15th century. <laughs> Alla 
That was really. I, I thought I heard a little Alex singing on that one. Uh, it was actually wasn't me. That was uh, Yakuba singing on that oh. one. No, it's a, oh, you're uh, talking about that at the very end. Yeah, when it yeah. goes to the next song, uh, I'm actually counting in the band. Oh, okay. And yeah, normally mm-hmm. that's the type of thing you would remove, but it went into my microphone. <laughs> so uh, we actually, yeah we actually couldn't. Yeah, really, because I, I was saying it while while I was playing. So it, the same microphone that picked up the guitar picked that up. Well, and I didn't know until we did our last interview that you'd actually started off wanting to sing. Are you going to do any singing in the future on any of your stuff? Um, it's possible. I, you know, I dabble in in vocals occasionally, and every time I do, you know, I'm encouraged by those who you know who hear it. So. I think it'll happen one of these days. I just haven't felt it's the right outlet. And I feel like you know, there's been so much to express instrumentally, mm. as you can see, by, right. by this project. Well, where should we go next? Okay, let's skip to um, uh, the tune Rock of Ramallah. Awesome. That's where I was hoping you'd go. And this one uh, features a wonderful musician. It's um, Adnan Jabran. He's part of a trio that plays uh, the Oud, which is a, an Arabic lute, mm-hmm. and they're from the Palestinian region. And um, this tune has me play the instrument uh, that I, I'm more known for, which is the electric guitar. And um, Originally, that wasn't part of the plan, but it just seemed to fit this song very well, and especially with uh, everything that was going on and in, in the news pertaining to that part of the world. Right. And I, so, I, I feel it. Like, I feel yeah. you. Actually, we have a guest that's going to be coming on at some point from Palestine named Peter Jam, who is oh, a peace cool. activist. And uh, he, he lives over, actually, I, I believe he's living in Lebanon now, but he's actually from Palestine. And uh, we're, we're going to get into talking about what's been going on over there. But can't wait to hear this song, Rock of Ramallah.
Loved it. That was great. Getting to hear you play electric was cool. Yeah, it just uh, it fit. I see. Yeah, I I'm see dead. why you chose to do it too. It 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 yeah, really it captured the energy. It kind of goes without saying. It sort of speaks for itself. By the way, growing up in an academic family, you can definitely tell you did because it must have rubbed off through us most because you're a really great teacher in the way that you talk about the instruments and how you're playing. And it's just you learn a lot as you're talking about your songs. Um, I, I think people are getting a lot about instruments they didn't know before. And it's um, it's really nice because a lot of times I think um, sort of like when we were talking about the way people hear music and it's over their head. I think a lot of times when musicians talk about music, they talk over people's heads and the sure, way you're explaining sure. everything is so down to earth and so grounded and just very, uh, very professorial. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, thank you. So what, what's, what song should we take the show out on? We'll take the show out on sleeping gypsy. Cool. And that was one of the first tunes I wrote for the project. And, um, it really captures, you know, Gypsy, it's a very um, multinational uh, thing. You know, there's Gypsies in Spain and France, um, all, all, all over the world. And um, I wrote it for my girlfriend, Maddie, who did all the artwork and for the, the album. She's a great artist and architect. And um, it's, it's really, to me, it really captures, it sums up the album. It's a real, you know, traveling tune, and uh, it closes everything out, because by the time you've uh, listened to the whole album, you've taken a sonic trip around the world. So you're, Perhaps. you're a gypsy. This has been an amazing journey that you've taken us on. Love the stories. Um, I can't you. thank you enough for coming back and, and sharing your your uh, creation with us. Um, and if you can stay right, around right. for a couple minutes till the song's over, I'd love to chat right. and just sort of wrap everything up. So without further ado, here is Sleeping Gypsy by Alex Skolnick. <sighs>
Thank you, everyone, for joining the Just Love Show tonight on this very special musical spotlight edition. And I'd like um, Alex to tell everyone so we can wrap up where they can find his music at. Okay, yeah, everybody can. Um, <clears throat> all the information is on planetarycoalition.com, and there are links to buy the CD. And um, it's available on iTunes. Uh, the name of the project, again, is Planetary Coalition. Everything is planetarycoalition.com. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we will be seeing you next week with uh, Paul Bundance from uh, LO.co. And I'll be chatting with Alex for a second after the show. Take care, all. Okay. The link is on the website. Thank mm-hmm. you.